Earlier this year, U.S. media reported that Washington might suspend the supply of engines for the C-919, China's flagship narrow-body jetliner. Since entering service in 2023, this aircraft has carried over 1 million passengers and logged 28,000 hours of safe flight with hopes of soon competing with Boeing and Airbus. However, if the U.S. truly cuts off supply, the C-919 program could come to a halt within just three years. Unexpectedly, at this critical moment, Russia stepped in, offering to provide PD-14 engines for the C-919, igniting a new front in the U.S.-Russia rivalry. So, what exactly are Washington and Moscow plotting, and will Russia really deliver engines for the C-919? Let's find out. China has pinned huge ambitions on the C-919, but is this truly a breakthrough in complete independence? The answer may surprise many. While the C-919 is hailed as the pride of China's aviation industry, it now stands on a dangerous edge because of its deep reliance on foreign technology. Let's start with the heart of the C-919, its jet engine. This heart was not built by Shanghai, but by CFM International's Leap 1C, a joint venture in which France's Safran and America's GE Aerospace each hold 50%. This raises a critical question. If your rival controls your heart, can you really soar safely? The answer is no. The power to decide engine supply lies entirely in Washington's hands, giving the U.S. the ability to cut off access at will. To grasp the scale of the manufacturer's importance, look at the miniature Villa Row plant south of Paris. This is the beating heart of Europe's aerospace industry and the core base of Safran aircraft engines. Covering over 100 hectares, equal to more than 140 football fields, and employing over 5,000 staff, the plant can produce more than 1,600 aircraft engines annually, powering over 800 planes worldwide. Today, over 70% of all single-aisle jets in service rely on engines from this facility, and China's C919 is no exception. Control is a powerful weapon that not everyone can wield. In fact, the U.S. has already used this weapon before. At the end of May, the U.S. Department of Commerce signaled that it was considering suspending export licenses for certain American firms supplying products and technologies to COMAC, the maker of the C919. Shortly after, many longtime suppliers were denied approval for new export licenses. Among them was none other than CFM International, provider of the Leap 1C engine. This isn't just a hypothetical scenario, it has already happened. And the risk not only happens with engines. Look inside the C919 and you'll find what looks like an assembly kit of American technology. From the avionics system, jointly developed by AVIC and GE, to other critical components, the communication and navigation system by Raytheon, hydraulic flight controls by Parker Hannifin, the auxiliary power unit by Honeywell, and even landing gear hydraulics by Parker Aerospace, virtually all core systems come from the U.S. This points to an undeniable truth. China may have built the body of the aircraft, but its soul still belongs to the West. Although Safran once cajoled China that it would consider building a Leap 1C assembly line in this country if the C919 enters true mass production, it already runs a Leap 1A assembly facility in Tianjin with an initial annual capacity of 50 units, the influence of GE Aerospace remains a major obstacle, and even though Washington has not yet specified exactly which systems have had their export licenses revoked, and international media have revealed few details, one thing is certain. If engine supply is cut off, the Chinese flagship jetliner's delivery schedule will be disrupted. Some U.S. media have even predicted that if Washington halts all Leap 1C engine exports, the aircraft could be forced to cease production within three years. But do you wonder why the United States would risk alienating such a major customer as China? The answer lies in rare earths. In the 21st century, these elements have become indispensable for smartphones, electric vehicles, wind turbines, and advanced military technologies. Although China holds only about 36.67% of global reserves, it controls over 90% of refining capacity and related technology. In the field of heavy rare earths, China is the only country in the world with full extraction and refining capability. As a result, more than 70% of America's rare earth imports come from China, with near total dependence on heavy rare earths. With this understanding, to counter Western restrictions, Beijing has repeatedly tightened its export policies over the past two years, requiring companies to obtain licenses and disclose the end use and customer details of rare earth shipments. While exports for civilian sectors such as automobiles and electronics remain possible, if materials could be used for military purposes, approval has become almost impossible. The first to feel the pressure was the U.S. military-industrial complex. 
Many defense contractors scrambled to secure alternative supplies outside China, but most failed, causing critical orders to be delayed for months. At the same time, prices for key rare earths skyrocketed. By mid-June, some materials used in magnetic components rose more than five-fold compared to April, while samarium, a rare earth metal used in fighter jet engines, surged nearly 60-fold. Under such strain, Washington was forced to soften its stance. On July 4th, the U.S. Department of Commerce officially approved GE Aerospace to resume supplying jet engines to Comac, and several American original equipment manufacturers also began gradually restoring deliveries of components for China's aircraft projects. Clearly, if the U.S. insists on enforcing a ban, it risks breaching procurement contracts, losing the fast-growing Chinese market, and, perhaps most dangerously, accelerating Beijing's drive to achieve breakthroughs in core aviation technologies, leading to the exact opposite outcome of what Washington intended. The U.S. decision to resume supplying engines for the C-919 may seem to have calmed tensions, but everyone understands this is only a temporary truce. The technology war is far from over, and both sides are preparing their next countermoves. Notably, in this tense moment, Russia suddenly stepped in with an offer that could change the game. Last month, Sergei Kimzov, CEO of the Russian state-owned technology conglomerate Rostec, publicly declared readiness to supply aircraft engines to China. This offer is far from empty talk. Rostec is one of Russia's largest industrial groups, boasting formidable aerospace capabilities. Its subsidiary ranks fifth worldwide in aircraft engine manufacturing, behind only giants like GE, Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce, and CFM. Overall, Russia stands as the world's second industrial power in this sector, just after the U.S. Among its products, Russia highlighted the PD-14, a modern high-bypass turbofan engine. It is the first jet engine fully developed in Russia and is currently installed on the MC-21, a medium-range narrow-body aircraft designed to compete directly with the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. However, besides, what makes the PD-14 special? This engine is a true technological feat. Engineers applied advanced 3D aerodynamic design to optimize airflow and maximize performance. Notably, it uses hollow fan blades produced with diffusion bonding technology, making the engine both durable and lightweight, thereby enhancing overall efficiency. In addition, the PD-14's compressor combines titanium and nickel alloys for greater strength. Its combustor is coated with ceramic thermal barriers to minimize overheating risks. One of its standout features is a modular design allowing individual parts to be serviced without removing the entire engine, significantly reducing downtime and maintenance costs. Still, everything has a weakness. The PD-14 has a lower bypass ratio, 8.5 to 1 compared to the Leap 1C's 11 to 1, which makes it less fuel efficient. On the other hand, it runs at turbine inlet temperatures 60 to 80 degrees Celsius lower, extending maintenance cycles and cutting operating costs by 2.5 to 3 percent. The engine also meets strict noise and emission standards, performs well at high altitudes, and responds quickly to thrust changes. With these capabilities, the PD-14 becomes a strategic card. If the U.S. once again halts engine supplies to the C-919, Russia's offer is not just a backup solution, it could be a powerful countermove capable of shifting the balance of power in the global aviation industry. But is Russia truly willing to hand over its flagship engines? Despite Moscow's tempting overtures, China does not fully trust any other major power. It cannot gamble on a political wager. It must ultimately take control of its own destiny. When rumors of a U.S. embargo began to spread, Shanghai revealed its trump card, the domestically developed CJ-1000A engine. This is not a new project, but it has now become the nation's top priority. The CJ-1000A was designed as a near replica of the Leap 1C, with a thrust rating of up to 13 tons and fuel efficiency nearly on par. It has already completed a 150-hour core endurance test and is preparing for its bold next step, being mounted on the C919 for high-altitude flight trials. If successful and certified by the Civil Aviation Administration of China, it would qualify for commercial service on domestic routes, formally ending reliance on imported engines. To turn this ambition into reality, China has accelerated the program at an extraordinary pace. The original goal of mass production by 2030 has been pulled forward to 2027, with type certification expected before 2026. Even supporting manufacturers such as Avic Xinyang have launched expansion tenders, signaling that the production machinery is running at full speed. Yet the road to glory is far from smooth. 
Despite impressive early progress, the engine still faces a long and challenging journey. A new engine must undergo thousands of flight hours to prove its reliability and stability. Countless technical hurdles remain, from establishing a full maintenance ecosystem and a spare parts supply chain to ensuring seamless compatibility with pilot operations. As of now, the engine has yet to complete its official flight tests. Chinese engineers are racing against time to overcome each technical barrier. However, despite the difficulties ahead, the CJ-1000A represents far more than a technical project. It is a symbol of China's determination. It embodies the confidence and the solid foundation needed to break free from dependency, ensuring a long-term and stable future for the C919 in the battle for dominance in the skies. The story of the C919 is not merely a matter of commerce, it is a mirror reflecting the complex geopolitical struggle of our time. The United States' use of technology as a weapon to pressure China highlights how technological dependence has become a critical vulnerability in the new era. This conflict forces both sides to bear costs. American companies face the risk of losing the vast Chinese market, while China's aviation program faces existential threats. Yet Washington's moves may ultimately backfire. External pressure has accelerated China's push to develop the CJ-1000A engine, a long-term project that has now become a national priority. Meanwhile, Russia's unexpected offer to supply engines further complicates the game, providing Beijing with a potential strategic alternative should isolation deepen. In the end, even if this Chinese jetliner cannot yet rival Boeing or Airbus directly, it has already become a symbol of China's determination to achieve self-reliance. What is unfolding is not simply a race to build aircraft, but a battle over control of technology and global supply chains, one that will reshape the future of the aviation industry worldwide. In your view, is it the United States, China, or perhaps even Russia that truly holds the upper hand in this matter? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe if you want more deep dives into the battles shaping our world. Because in aviation, as in politics, the skies are never as calm as they seem. Thanks, and stay safe.